Six, Israel was to have a new home to be found primarily to the northwest. Whilst the children of Israel did conquer and settle in the lands of Canaan, it was prophesied that they would eventually have a new home. This home would be to the north and to the west. So which countries are northwest of Palestine? Well, all the countries in Europe of course. Now we've shown so far how history shows that the Israelites spread into, colonized and conquered Europe throughout different periods and we've also shown how Yahweh planned to come down as a man, as Christ, to regather his bride, the Israelites, back to him and rename them to Christians. Now we will also show that the Bible itself says that the Israelites would be heading into Europe, which altogether makes it obvious that the Israelites can only be the white Europeans. So we will first prove that Israel was to one day have a new home and for that we will turn to 2 Samuel. A little context, King David is ruling over the whole United Kingdom of Israel and even though he has conquered many neighboring territories and the kingdom is vast, the prophet Nathan is standing with him in Jerusalem and states, Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people Israel, this is Yahweh speaking, and will plant them and that they may dwell in a place of their own and move no more, neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them any more as before time. Palestine was never really a place of their own because they never fully drove out all the Canaanites. Therefore, it was more like a shared place to have a place of their own. The Israelites would have to find a place uninhabited or not assigned by Yahweh to any other people. So to explain that, we will have to turn to Deuteronomy. In chapter 32, it says, When the Most High divided the nations, their inheritance. When he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. Now this is talking about Noah getting off the ark and how the lands were divided between his sons and their descendants. So Yahweh is saying here that he divided the lands around the children of Israel who weren't even born yet. In Genesis 10, we get a brief list of those other Adamic nations that came from Noah. Now it doesn't explicitly tell us where they ended up, but we can work it out roughly by correlating history. We'll cover this later in Proof 8, but now a quick summary. Generally, Shem's descendants built nations in the Middle East, whilst Japheth's descendants were pushed west and east but to the north, whilst Ham's descendants generally were pushed to the south. What you'll notice here is large swaths of Europe are unassigned, and as we go through the prophets, it will become clear Europe was the true home Yahweh planned for us, the Israelites, all along the lands of Canaan we were just passing through. So we will start with Jeremiah and we should begin with a basic timeline and background. Jeremiah preached in Jerusalem to the kings of Judah and his ministry started around 627 BC. This was almost a hundred years after the northern kingdom of Israel had already been deported by the Assyrians. Jeremiah had a long ministry, probably over 50 years. By Jeremiah's time, the Assyrians were already in decline and by 612 BC, they collapsed and were destroyed. Therefore, Jeremiah was warning Jerusalem to repent, but no doubt with the decline of Assyria, it gave Jerusalem a false sense of security. Ultimately, Ultimately, it was Babylon who conquered and deported them. So whilst Jeremiah's prophecies mostly concerned Jerusalem, he also spoke about the Israelites who had already been deported. Now these prophecies specifically reveal where the deported Israelites or lost tribes had went, which was ultimately to Europe. So starting with Jeremiah chapter 3, firstly in verse 12, he is going to make an announcement to the Israelites who were deported. So they were in Assyria, but where did they go? So he is told to proclaim these words to the north, not the south, not the east, but the north. Return thou backsliding Israel. He's not going to be angry forever. So this is of course Christianity, which will ultimately redeem them. This lines up with what we've been saying that those Israelites began to migrate north in waves. Then a little later, verse 18. So this is talking again about bringing together both kingdoms, all Israelites, all 12 tribes into Europe under Christianity. In those days, the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel, 
and they shall come together out of the land of the north to the land that I have given for an inheritance unto your fathers. And that's exactly what all history shows, that the Chimerians, the Scythians, the Goths, the Alans, the Masagei or Huns as they're called, all migrated to the north and then moved into Europe and the two houses were reunited as Europeans or Christians. But that's not all, later in Jeremiah chapter 31, Jeremiah makes another prophecy, Behold, I will bring them from the north country. So this is those dispersed Israelites who went north to Europe becoming the Germanic tribes and gather them from the coast of the earth. Now no earth doesn't mean the whole world, it just means local, the land, the coastlands. So this is the Israelites such as Phoenicians, Trojans, Danans, Dorians who'd already went to Europe. He's going to bring them all together and history shows this is exactly what happens. The Germanic tribes invaded the southern parts of Europe and they all got combined into one people. This is reinforced only two verses later. Hear the word of the Lord, O you nations. That's sometimes translated as Gentiles but it's nations and declare it in the isles far off and say he that scav Israel will gather him and keep him as a shepherd do his flock. So this proves that the Israelites were scattered, they didn't all just remain in Israel. Now this doesn't specifically prove that those isles are the Mediterranean and West Europe but for that we will turn to Isaiah. So we probably once again should give a little background, Isaiah's ministry started around 729 BC, so well over a hundred years before Jeremiah and yet again he was a prophet in Jerusalem. He mostly is giving warnings to repent or face the incoming destruction from Assyria. The books of Isaiah spoke to two different groups of Israelites. Chapter 1 to 40 are focused on the kingdom of Israel and the impending Assyrian invasion, whilst chapters 41 to 66 focus on the already scattered Israelites. Isaiah indicates that those scattered Israelites had been migrating to Europe. Isaiah thus proves that the Israelites were never confined to one geographical area. All along they had been spreading far and wide and especially into Europe. So we'll start with Isaiah chapter 11 and here Yahweh declares that he's going to recover all the Israelites wherever they are. So it starts off by saying from Assyria and from Egypt. These are actually allegories for the Assyrian captivity and for the Egyptian captivity. Then it's actual geographical locations, so Paphros which is Upper Egypt, Cush which is below Canaan, we'd probably say Arabia today, Elam that's Persia a little bit to the east. Shinar, a really ancient name for Babylon, again in the east, and Hamath, so northern Syria, so all the places around Israel where Israelites are spread out to, and from the islands of the sea, once again islands would be better translated coastlands, so this is talking about the Mediterranean, i.e. Europe. And then only a few verses later it confirms where all these Israelites would ultimately be heading. Verse 14, but they shall fly upon the shoulders of the Philistines towards the west. Now note this is a bit of a dodgy translation, in other translations shoulders is ships, so they'll sail on the ships and Philistines in the Septuagint is simply other tribes, so they'll sail on the ships to the west and they shall spoil them of the east together and it lists the lands and this is exactly what happened, many Israelites went west into Europe grew in strength and then came back and destroyed the east, i.e. the Greeks under Alexander, they destroyed the Persian Empire and the Romans ultimately came to dominate. But once again that's not all, Isaiah chapter 41, so here it's really explicit where he's talking purely to the Israelites in Europe. Keep silence before me, O islands or coastlands, and let the people renew their strength. Why do these coastlands need to renew their strength? What happened to them? Well they were Israelites who'd settled in Europe and came from the great kingdom of Israel, but Israel was about to be destroyed by the Assyrians, so these colonies were cut off. 
Rome was founded around 753 BC, so very close to the time of the Assyrian deportations. It was but a pitiful small city, and Greece at this time wasn't very powerful either, but within a few centuries they would become the center of civilization, so the Israelites certainly did renew their strength. Can I prove that these coastlands are in the west in Europe? Well, the next verse, who raises up the righteous man from the east? So this is obviously talking about Christ, and Christ is in the east, in the context from those coastlands Isaiah just prophesies. So the coastlands must be in the west, in the Mediterranean, in Europe, Greece, Rome, Carthage, Iberia, Brighton, etc. It's all them, they are the Israelites. So that's two major prophets, but here is one more, Hosea, he will make it also clear that the Israelites were to the west in Europe. In Hosea 11, there is a prophecy of how Yahweh brought the Israelites out of Egypt and Assyria, a brief overview of their sins and how they keep backsliding back to sin. And despite all this, Yahweh will not be angry forever. So essentially the same thing as Isaiah and Jeremiah, but said in a different way. And in verse 10, we get to the important part, they shall walk after the Lord, so this is re-obeying Yahweh's commandments, he shall roar like a lion, this is Christ, the Lion of Judah, and when he shall roar, then the children shall tremble from the west. So who are these people in the west who will tremble? Obviously the Europeans, but in the next verse it identifies them. They shall tremble as a bird out of Egypt, that's an allegory for the Egyptian captivity, and as a dove out of the land of Assyria, again referring to the Assyrian captivity. So these people in the west, the Europeans, went through either or both of these captivities, so it's clear they have to be the Israelites, nobody else went through them. So what's going to happen to them? And I, or Yahweh, will place them in their houses, so that place in the west, Europe, is essentially their new house, their new home. So in other words, Europe is where Yahweh is placing the Israelites, not to the south, not to the east but to the west in Europe. Now we've shown three prophets making it clear the Israelites would be in Europe, but now let's have a look at the Apocrypha. We're going to focus on 2nd Ezra here, and this is a bit more specific because it tells us where the deported Israelites actually went in Europe. But first we should give a little context to the Assyrian invasions. So by around 721 BC, Assyria had deported all of the Northern Kingdom, so the Northern Ten Tribes of Israel, but what most people don't realize is in 701 BC, roughly 20 years later, there was a second invasion, so they came back, and this time invaded the southern kingdom, so the southern two tribes, and it was largely successful. The Assyrians conquered the whole kingdom and deported many Israelites, so Judahites, Benjamites, all except for Jerusalem, they couldn't take the capital city. So that means the Israelites who were deported across the Assyrian Empire consisted of all 12 tribes, not just 10 tribes. However, Jerusalem was the capital city, it potentially could have had millions of inhabitants, and after the invasions, Jerusalem began to repopulate the southern kingdom, so it was revived, so to speak. Now here is the confusion, for simplicity, the deported Israelites are generally referred to as the Ten Tribes, and this revived Southern Kingdom is called the Two Tribes, and this is what leads to the confusion. If you understand these deported Israelites eventually migrated to Europe, you might be deceived thinking it was only Ten Tribes and there was no Judah or Benjamin who came with us, but they certainly did. So with that, we'll get back to Second Ezra's and we will focus on chapter 13 verses 40 onwards. So it starts off by talking about the ten tribes of Israel where the king of Assyria took them away into captivity into the Assyrian Empire. Now as we said earlier, Assyria did deport a lot of Judah and Benjamin, the southern kingdom, except for Jerusalem. It then goes on to say that the Israelites formed a plan and that they would leave the nations where they lived behind and go to a new land. Now this new land would be where no man has dwelt before and this time they would 
would be able to keep Yahweh's laws that they didn't keep in their own land. Now in the lands of Canaan, they were kind of sharing it with the Canaanites and therefore were corrupted by them so they never truly kept Yahweh's laws. Europe above the Danube River was virtually uninhabited at this time so it would be the land where no man had dwelt before. Continuing it says that they crossed the Euphrates River and that Yahweh made signs for them, stopping the river so that they could pass. The new country that they were heading to was a year and a half's journey and the region they were heading to is called Asaref. So where is this Asaref? Can we even locate it? Well it just so happens in East Europe there is a river called the Saraf River. It still bears that name even today, although in other languages it's called the Sera, the Sira, the Cesara and more. The river flows into the Black Sea and it's also connected to the Great Danube River. Now what you'll immediately notice about the Seraph River is the huge mountainous area on the left. Well it just so happens as we explained before, R in Hebrew means mountain, hilltop, high point. So put it together, R Seraph, it's likely referring to the mountains of the Seraph River. This is where the Israelites were traveling to. And if you think about it, if you was to travel over the Caucasus mountain, you cannot stay there. With wave after wave, there's not enough land for everyone, you have to keep moving. And if you did follow the lake, you would eventually come to Azeroth. It's exactly where you'd end up. So there's nothing fantastic, it's all logical. Now Ezra's would have written around 458 BC and when we compare this to what the historian Herodotus wrote, which would have been around 450. 50 BC, Herodotus states that north of the Danube was virtually uninhabited at his time, except for a recent colony of the Medes. The Medes was the primary location the Israelites came out of from Assyria, so it all adds up. Whilst other historians make it clear that north of the Danube was far too cold in the winters, there seems to have been a general warming period from then on. It's almost as if Yahweh was keeping these lands in reserve for his people, the Israelites. So there you go, the prophets Jeremiah, Isaiah, Hosea and even Ezra's all make it clear that the Bible says the Israelites went to the northwest to Europe. So if you truly believe the Bible, then you should believe we are the Israelites because that's what the Bible says. They didn't head south to the Sahara, neither did they head east to the Himalayas, nor did they jump on boats and sail for the Americas. No, they went to Europe and became the Europeans. In other words, we are the Israelites of the Bible.